Good afternoon, Atlanta Music Project Young Musicians and Friends. My name is Brianna Johnson, and I'm happy to welcome you to another edition of AMP Online Master Classes, sponsored by the Chestnut Family Foundation. Today's class is uh, Stepping into Your Operatic Role, taught by Miss Pamela Dillard, who is one of our um, AMP voice teaching artists. Um, today, I invite you to participate by taking notes at home, and answering and asking questions in the chat. If you'd like, you can also have your video shown to demonstrate a concept as we go through the class. So let's get started, and I'm going to shift over to Miss Pamela. Good afternoon, or good evening, I guess it is right now, um, of AMP students and those of you who are joining us from um, around the, the country. Um, my name is Pamela Dillard, and I am a mezzo-soprano. I am here to talk to our students today about stepping into their operatic role. The, um, my voice type in, in opera is called mezzo-soprano, mezzo being the Italian word for half, but it doesn't mean that I'm half a soprano. <laughs> it just means that my voice is, uh, has a, a, a lower range. I sing normally in a lower range. I also um, will, um, my, my range is, is low, can be as large as the sopranos, um, but I usually sing in that lower range. And then I like to sing the high notes as well. Um, my color is different. My timbre, the timbre of my voice is different. You can even hear it in my speaking voice. I get more of a, an alto, sort of a rich deep, rich, deep, and darker sound than a lot of sopranos. Not all sopranos, but a lot of sopranos. And, uh, and I am just a little bit more comfortable singing in, um, in the lower register. I wanted to share with you that my, um, the, the mezzo roles are often the secondary roles in opera. Uh, however, there are some title roles or, or leading uh, roles and leading characters that we sing. Mentors are usually known to sing the vixens, the witches, vixens, and boys, or, or what we know as trouser roles. Uh, we, do, we do a lot of uh, secondary parts like the mothers, the maids, a uh, good friend, that kind of thing. And, uh, and in my career, I have had the opportunity to do almost all of those types of roles. It's been really wonderful. I wanted to share with you a few pictures. This is one of my first leading roles. This is called La Belle Hélène, where I played the, the title character of Helen. Um, this was one of my times as a, a gypsy in the Carmen, and I have sung the role of Carmen. Um, we talked about boys, I just talked about boy roles or trouser roles. This is me as playing the man Orlovsky, the prince Orlovsky in uh, Die Flader Mouse, which is a uh, German opera. Um, I did that way back when uh, in uh, college, in grad school and on the road. Um, here's a character role that I sang. This is the role of Meg Page in um, Falstaff. This, is, this music is a Verdi opera based on the story of one of his plays, Falstaff. And then I wanted to share this one last picture, uh, with two last pictures. This one is the picture of me. Actually, this was an opera singing uh, a Valkyrie. This is a Wagner opera, big, that big musical sound. And, um, and I was playing a Valkyrie, but they had it based where we were aviators. And uh, I remember posting this and someone said to me, um, they sent me a, a, a link and a, a picture saying that I looked like Bessie Coleman. So I got a little African-American history. Bess, Bessie Coleman was a, a African-American aviator who was flying back in the 1920s. And uh, I got a chance to look like her in this, again, German opera. Uh, and then one last, a uh, thing I wanted to say about um, the operas, the, the pictures, is that I was able to, um, in my secondary parts, one of the things I loved about being on stage is uh, being able to dress up, being wigs and makeup, um, the friends that I've made, the different 
Uh, smaller parts I've done. This is me as Helen, again, playing a lead character and uh, just good friends that I've sung with over the years. And then when you get to sit in that chair and have someone else do your, your makeup and uh, put your wig on. Lots of fun as an opera singer. All right, moving on. We have a lot to talk about today. I wanted to let you all know that <clears throat> you can ask a question at any time. I'm open. We're going to move through. I have a PowerPoint for you. We're going to move through it pretty quickly um, so that we can get to some student demonstrations today. We have a couple of students who are going to talk about pieces and talk about, you can go ahead and pull it up and talk about uh, their, the pieces that they're singing uh, or and how they prepare them. And I'll talk a little bit about mine. So this is all about, guys, all about stepping into your operatic role, the art of the singing actor. And do know that, um, that you can, um, uh, as singing actors, we are always constantly storytelling. That's a big uh, mantra of mine. When, no, no matter what you're singing, you want to be telling a story. You can continue it. And that next one is just me, tis I. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we need to know about uh, being an opera singer or preparing our operatic role is what an opera is. And this is just some general information. I know you know what it is, but I wanted to, to go ahead and, and review it. Um, an opera, the word opera means great work of writing or music. And uh, you see the synonyms that are there. It's a creation, a great creation. Of course, it's all about the music and the singing. Uh, we can call it a composition. We know that the music is composed uh, or written by composers. And it's a big production a lot of times. It, not always big, but it is a production. And we'll talk about some more forms. The other thing I wanted to point, point out in this, uh, on this page is that uh, some of our elements of opera include a number, a number of the performing arts, such as acting, scenery, costumes, and sometimes dance and ballet are in, in the operas as well. So let's talk about the musical elements of opera, because that's what we're going to go ahead and uh, discuss today as we, we talk about uh, preparing a role. The opera is based on a libretto. That's the story of the opera, just like a play, uh, a... Um, um, what else, a script, you know, and script, a, a, a scene play in, in, uh, in movies, screenplay in movies. Then there's the score, the music, um, which really those two are what really create the, the great work. All right, there's an orchestra, there are singers, and the singers uh, perform and sing leading roles, secondary roles, uh, even smaller parts. Uh, then there are oftentimes actors or supers, uh, we call them supernumeraries in, uh, in operas. And you'll see all of that. And oh, oh, I should have put dancers. Sometimes we have dancing in operas as well. The music consists of arias, recitative, which are our singing dialogue, a monologue that, that, um, that happened before the opera, the, the aria is, is sung. Uh, the aria is a, a is the is the the um, is the big selection that uh, we hear often hear um, like a, a big musical theater number. We in the opera um, world we call them arias. Um, then we have duets, trios, quartets, small ensembles, sextets, uh, octets. All of those are often, and then of course there are the big choral pieces. And you, if, you, if you notice, I have a picture. This was the Met production this year of Porgy and Bess. <clears throat> and this opera, in, interestingly enough, has um, main characters. It has those leading characters. Of course, Porgy and Bess are the title characters. But this opera is really about this chorus. The chorus tells the story um, just as much as those leading characters. All right. So we'll move on to the next. Those are our musical ele elements. 
So we're, now we're going to get into stepping into your role. What does that mean? Uh, this, this screen is talking about what the audience sees when they go to the production of an opera. They only see 1% of the work that has been put in by you, by the theater, the, the directors, the conductors, only 1% because of course we know we rehearse to prepare, but we have to do some things before the rehearsal process and the production process. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So here on this, on this screen, I have alone in your practice space. And a, a friend of mine called it your kitchen table work. When we're preparing music, we don't off, always have to be singing the music to get prepared for it. We need to sit down with that score, study it. We have books for research, um, headphones, because you all are using your technology a lot. We have YouTube, um, things like that. You can listen to performers. Um, one of the things I wanted to say to you, the good news about preparing um, a role for an opera is that you have so many more, so, so much more access to information in this, techno this, this time of technology. Um, your music preparation, moving on, uh, you need to work with a voice teacher. You need to, oh, same page, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the music pre preparation is you want to be able to technically to sing your role well. So you're going to check in with a voice teacher um, and a vocal coach is going to help you with your languages, um, your phrasing, different things to make the role, the, the singing musical. Um, and then um, it suggests that this is information that I found from a very famous opera singer singing uh, currently called uh, by the name of Joyce Di Donato. And one of the things she, she suggests is that if you are able to, uh, to have the opportunity to get a role, and this is for you too, guys, you, the, the, um, if you are going to do community theater or anything like that, you wanna work backwards for that rehearsal, that first rehearsal. And you need to make sure your music is memorized and you know everything that you need to, all the musical markings and all of that we're gonna talk about in just a minute. You need to be completely prepared and you want to do that maybe at least a month out, no less than a week. You wanna be able to go in with all the confidence that, the, that as it says up here, the work you have put in. All right. So let's go to how to prepare your opera role. Learn about research. You're going to learn about the composer and librettist. You've got to know who they are and a little bit of something about them. Well, if not a lot, you want to talk about, you want to learn about the origin. The, uh, you can listen to, again, we're going back to that technology, pulling up YouTube uh, recordings, not just one, several. There, a lot of these, a lot of works, well, in opera, a lot of works have been done repeatedly, and you can find um, these works and these songs that you're learning, and you can listen to several recordings of it. You can even watch the conductors. We call this the performance practice. What, what was done in that production? How did they uh, present this piece? What were their practices? Those are things that you can you have easy, easy access to uh, on YouTube. Um, then we have the researching the period of which the opera is set. And that's going to give you those costumes and the customs and all of that. Um, we don't have to do the study here, these first three points, because we're not going to talk about foreign language. But I already talked about working with your musical coach. If you are doing a foreign language, and working your your, with your teacher to perfect your uh, vocal technique while singing the role. All right, and then moving forward from there, we want to make sure that your music is memorized. We just talked about that, being prepared before it's time to do the recording. And this talks about 
knowing what your mode of learning is, are you, are you auditory? Are you visual? Is it better for you to just listen to recordings or do you need to watch it? All right, and today we're gonna to do a lot of this character development. You're going to, um, and, and I'm gonna move on from this, this page because we're gonna talk about how to develop those characters. Although this does talk about looking at movies and things like that. Um, this page you can read later. And um, I wanted to share with you, I'm moving on to a role that I decided to present for you today in, for character development. I chose the opera Margaret Bar Garner, excuse me, Margaret Garner. Margaret Garner is an American opera um, and it, it is a current opera. It was written right here in the 21st century. And um, it is based on a historical figure in uh, who was who was um, who lived during the times of slavery, and this story is a very poignant story. It's about her um, escaping slavery and killing her children because she didn't want them to grow up in slavery, and then uh, being caught and having to um, uh, stand trial for it. Um, the the uh, historical figure figure. Margaret Garner is the basis of the book Beloved by the author uh, Toni Morrison. Um, and once she wrote the book, then a movie came about. So a screenplay was written and, uh, and Oprah Winfrey was one of the stars of the, opera, of the movie. Then she went on and developed it in a different way. She wrote a libretto, that, that um, script uh, for an opera. She collaborated with a composer by the name of Richard Daniel Poor. He's a Persian Je Jewish composer and they um, debuted the opera back in 2005. So if you pull up that last screen, that uh, screen 15 for me, um, that's a little bit about, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Bianca, let me pull up mine. I have another share for you. So I chose these operas because it's an American opera, it's about a an African-American or black character, a Negro character uh, from that time. And I just wanted to show you some of the things that I found, found um, to help me with my research about this role. Um, I don't know why that keeps coming up. I may have to move on guys, but easily, again, using technology, you can, um, you can go to, the, to your computers, find out about your composer. I was trying to share a little bit of information that I found about Toni Morrison working with Daniel Poor about the history of Margaret Garner, that's Ohio history. And, uh, and then the, the actual synopsis of the story. The, um, it, you can go to Wikipedia, you can go to books. A lot of these, these uh, works that you'll work on are, come from books, they come from stories, and you can find out and you want to know what those stories are. When, you, um, when you're working on your role. Okay, so my part, my, uh, just a little bit, I'm a little lost here, Miss, Miss Brianna, did you pull up that? Am I still on? Yes, you're still on. Okay, can you pull up that last, uh, that, that screen with the Margaret Garner on it? I'm not seeing your share. But anyway, um, just a little bit about my scene. After I've done my research, found out about my composer and librettist, my uh, history, my character, who is, is, a, is a, a, um, a real character in history, um, and about the music and about the, the story, then I have learned this scene that we're going to play for you. And in this scene, I wanted to talk to you about who she is. I am singing, but I am Margaret Garner. 
and I am a slave in the, uh, during slave times. I have a husband and two children. And in this scene, there, uh, we are celebrating because the master has decided not to sell any of the slaves after the new year has started. And we've learned that the watch night, it comes from a, a, a custom of where the slaves would, would often be waiting to see if the master was going to, to sell anyone off in, in, at the beginning of the new year. And that's where we get that custom of watch night. In this scene, we're all happy. It's a, it's a, um, a small ensemble of people. And, but I sing a little bit of an aria, a little arietta of, uh, about a doll that I've made for my child because I'm happy. I want her to love the doll. I want her to love her family. And, and I feel that, that I might just be able to see her and watch her grow up and love the doll and her family. And, um, and we know, again, I talked about what happens in the story afterwards. Um, okay, so we can play that. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I don't hear anything and I don't see anything. I'm so sorry. Are we ready? We're gonna move on. Did, are there any questions? We can keep going, Miss Pam. Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of this from just uh, listening. Okay, uh, any questions? We can keep going. Okay, all right. So uh, if we have, uh, we have a student who's going to share, I have a couple of questions for you. Who's going to start? I'm excited. Oh, Miss Pam, I'm sorry. Were we gonna go over the who, what, when, where, how before we went through to the kids? Oh, we, we can go to that school. I can't see anything. I'm, I see you and I'm not sure what's, what's happening. Where, oh. There it is. I don't know what happened. Um, yes, you can go to that screen. Okay, so um, students, I have talked about the who in my scene that I was presenting, uh, uh, Margaret Gardner and what was happening. I really wanted to just talk about the who, but this is what we're going to do today, our character study. Who, what, when, where, and why. And we, we have these screens that are gonna tell you uh, what we're looking for, what you should be looking for when you are uh, studying your, your character and your, your part. Okay, so I talked about who I was um, and we, I want you all to decide, the three people who are presenting, what question you'd like to present for us. So you don't have to give me a lot of information, a lot, a lot of information, just one of the questions. Okay, we're going to pull up Jessica first. Great. Now, Jessica, can you tell me, we're still gonna need the, because she, when she tells me which question she wants to, uh, to, to respond to, 
uh, we're going to pull that up so you can know exactly what you're going to, um, what, what I'm going to be looking for, what information. But first, tell us what you're going to uh, sing or what, what uh, piece you're working on. If you're not singing, that's fine. But what piece are you working on? And, uh, and I, I want to know, the question I have for you is, what have you done to, to prepare? What, how have you started preparing your piece? Okay, so um, the piece I'm working on or I've worked on is The Return From Town. And it's um, the music is by H. Leslie Adams, but it's actually okay. a poem from someone else. Yes. And um, well, we I'm kind of like that, like who, what you've been saying. Do huh? we know who the poet is? Oh uh, yeah, let me. It's she has a long name. It's like uh, Edna Saint Vincent Millay. Oh yes, okay, one of mm -hmm. our famous yeah. American famous uh, poets. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. great. So like she, uh, he took her words like a few like they're uh, they're not in the same um, like time frame because she's now dead but he's still living. But um, I've been yeah it's kind of like making my own character out of the song. So like when I'm um, singing it because I sing it for the Black History Month um, recital. Uh huh. So I just like trying to make a character so like I know like what I'm trying to portray to the audience. That's excellent. So we, I, I sent a, a, a sheet yesterday that says that if you, if it doesn't come from a source like a, a, an opera or a show or something like that, and we don't have a libretto or a play, uh, a poem, we do have the poem, but it's a poem. It's not necessarily from a big work or a big production. So we, what we, what we do is we create our own subtext. We give ourselves, we put ourselves in a scene, and that's really wonderful work uh, that, that you've done. So can you tell me uh, just a little bit of... Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Pam. Uh, can Jessica, can you repeat what piece you're working on again? I think it maybe got lost for some people. Repeat what piece and then uh, who the um, composer is. The Return from Town and the composer is H. Leslie Adams. Okay, thank you. You guys can continue. Right, and then she told us who the poet is. Uh, and can you tell me a little bit about um, uh, Leslie Adams that might be interesting to uh, those of, uh, to our viewers, especially our AM mm -hmm. students? So um, the H stands for Harrison, which is his first name, and um, he currently lives in Cleveland, Ohio. He was born in 1932, so I'm not sure how old that makes him now. But um, he doesn't just do vocal compositions, co uh, compositions, he also does orchestral, which I found kind of cool. So like, it's kind of like two aspects of his okay. spectrum. All right, well, did you know that Leslie Adams is actually, he's a black man? Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, all right. So that's always good. That's good to know um, those, of, those of us who are especially in a program like Atlanta Music Project and, and maybe some of our other listeners that we, we are doing works by black composers uh, which is really cool. Uh, so now tell me, which question are you going to answer? Tell me a little bit about the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. What did you, when you, when you did your, created your own little scene or uh, uh, just tell me a little bit about it. Okay, so um, I'm choosing like the where. Okay. And so like the piece mentions two like actually like like actual places, it mentioned Saddle Stream and the Knob, and those are like in the areas of uh, like the Carolinas. And so when I was uh, singing the piece, it has like three verses. So like I kind of imagined it like um, she was walking like through uh, her town, and like when she starts, it's like daytime. When she gets to the middle verse, it's kind of like eveningish. But when she gets to the last verse, it's kind of like she's returning to her actual home, like at nighttime. Okay. And so yeah, that's kind of like the scenery I took from that. All right. So when you are singing it, you see yourself in that in that setting. Is that correct? That's mm -hmm. great. That's great. Thank you so much, Jessica. Good, good work. And, and yeah. um, it's good that you are using those who, what, wins, where, and whys <laughs> as you work on your pieces. All right. Do we have someone? Did you want to sing any of it? Oh, yeah, I can sing a verse. Oh, that would be lovely. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't ask sooner. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. As I sat down by Uh-oh. 
I think we're having some technical difficulty, oh, Jessica. Wait a minute, Jessica. Okay, can you try again one more time? Yeah. Okay. As I sat down by Saddle Street to bed. Okay, I think we're having a connection issue, Jessica. So, unfortunately, because you're frozen, I think we're going to have Hello? to move on. Yeah. Oh. Okay, she's back. Hello? Jessica, you are freezing. So, yeah, I think we're going to have to move on. I'm sorry, Jessica. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, I fine. think maybe something's up there a connection. But thank you so much. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now we're going to bring up um, Kennedy. Hello. Hi. Greetings. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks good. for asking. Good, 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 good. So listen, can you tell me uh, uh, what piece of you uh, want to talk about, have questions about, want to share with us? Uh, we want to know a little bit about your uh, role preparation process. And uh, so just go ahead and, and jump right in. Sure, I'm just gonna move my camera real quick because it's not in a good place. There we go. Oh, never mind. Okay, <laughs> I'm just going to start talking then. Okay, my piece, uh, it's called Asturiana. It's, uh, I think it's a place in Spain, kind of like a play on words, not actually a place in Spain, but it's very similar to the name of a place in Spain. It's written by um, a composer who's sadly passed a long time ago called Manuel de Falla. And what else do you want to know about it? Oh. Uh Tell, are you are you in the process of learning it, or are you um, have have you sung performed this piece already? Oh, I'm in the process of learning it. I received it uh, less than a week ago, I believe. Okay. A week ago. All right. So really great start there. Uh, and since you're just starting, that means that you have more work to do on your background preparation. Is oh yeah, correct? definitely. Yes. yes, correct. We wanna we wanna be able to. When we answering, you know what what Asturiana is. It's not. A, I think you know, mm -hmm. and, and we we do we do it. I'm my I chose a piece that I'm just mm -hmm. not starting to work on. So um, a lot of those things that we want to just continue to find out a little bit about. Do you uh, you mentioned the composer is Fire? Who mm -hmm. is um, um, the uh, poet or librettist? Who is the what now? The poet, or who did any write, write the uh, text? Who wrote the text? I believe he wrote it, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so Manuel de Falla, you yes. saying? Okay, de Falla is actually a man. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, I'm sorry, I might think I may have heard, I thought I heard you say she. Oh, uh, no, I didn't okay, say she. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, um, so, what, what? Tell me a little bit. Tell me about your who, what. Do you have any, uh, any of those questions that you can answer yet as you con uh, as you continue to uh, work on the piece? And I would love to know. Have you have you um, noticed any of, uh, or have you taken note of the musical details? Any of the musical details in the piece? Musical details. I've kept that to a minimum. I do. Uh, but uh, as far as the who, what, where, and all that, I actually have been working on that quite a lot. Okay, so just pick one and tell me, uh, it, can you tell me uh, where you are in the piece or you know, when, it, when was it happening? I think I have uh, something very special for that, when. The when, let me see. Well, I created a character um, for this piece. I feel like it's kind of a sadder piece, it's not, it's not upbeat in the slightest. So the character I created is um, an 18 year old. They're going to college and they're singing this because they have to leave their old life behind, their old house because of financial issues. Okay, great. So you actually giving us the who. 
yeah. who your character is. That's wonderful. And, uh, and you're creating your own uh, a person, uh, the, uh, your own character. It's yes. not based on a character. Does it, uh, uh, a librettist write it? Is it a character in the piece? No, I created the character. You're creating the character, and you you t- you said what? How old? Eighteen, going to college, fresh that's, out of high school. That's wonderful. So, <laughs> so you also you mentioned that the composer has has passed on. Uh, do you know what period he wrote in? He wrote in the early 1900s, but uh, I I'm gonna put this piece taking place in modern time because it, okay. it feels like it fits better. I love it. I love it. So yes, Fire would have written in the uh, 20th century, early 20th century. So, uh, and it's really great, especially for you, a uh, um, singer of your age to make this music, you know, mean something to you to, to and, and that's a really great way of approaching it. Um, uh, let's see, you wanna talk about anything else other than the who? Um, I, you've done a lot of work so far for it being a new piece. Well, I'm not sure if this is expanding on the who, but or if it's something different, but I'll just go ahead. Uh, the song mentions a green pine tree quite a lot. It's, it repeats that a lot. So I, I thought I would put um, the tree in the story and make it have some significance. You know, maybe the character grew up, you know, playing in the tree. It has significant value to them. Okay. So uh, it has significant value, but you're not necessarily... Um, the where is not necessarily outdoors with, with where the tree is. Mm, I put the where in, uh, it's this, I searched up the cities like with the highest cost of living in Spain and I came up with a place called Salamanca. Uh, that's why they have to move because, you know, it's expensive to live there. So they're moving to a poorer neighborhood. Okay, okay. So it's a, it, you're keeping yours kind of urban, mm-hmm. but that tree has some meaning. That's yes. fantastic. You have done so much work. So soon. So uh, this is not a, a, a entire role, but um, a little more work on the composer and, and the and the librettist or the writer of the piece. All those look different things that are going to help it really mean something to us. So that when we we are singing it, it's going to mean something to our listeners. We 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 feel that you're very confident about what you're singing about. I I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Miss Brianna, would you mind bringing up that that um, screen with the the wind before we go to the next um, uh, demonstrator to to Andrew? Sure, here we are. And this would be when. So uh, I wanted to just present this to you all um, in this character study. Uh, so when it, as you're preparing it. In your practice time, uh, whether you use it for recital performance, um, whether you use it for an audition, you want to be think about thinking about your when. So uh, when it says when is always now, and I love the way it puts even even if you're performing it eight times a week, you want to make sure eight performances a week. You want to make sure that you are in the moment. I always tell my students, you can choreograph every move you make when, you, when it's time to, uh, when you're practicing your pieces. But when it's time to sing it, you want to make sure that the body, the muscle memory is going to latch on to, to uh, a lot of those wonderful movements that you've been practicing. And, but you want to make it organic. You want to make it sincere and come from your heart. It has to be in the moment always at that time, okay? At the time that you're singing it, okay? All right, let's move on. I think we're gonna hear from Andrew. Any questions? I wanna stop for any questions. Uh, Miss Pam, we only have about six more minutes, so we have to take questions at the very end. Let's go ahead and bring on Andrew. No problem. Hi there. Hi. What piece are you going to talk about today? And I, I didn't ask, oh, okay. We're going to ask you to sing though. <laughs> so can you actually uh, introduce your piece and go ahead and, and sing for us and then we'll get some information. Yes. Um, the song that I'm singing is When I First Saw You from the musical Dream Girls. Um, it's about the, the character Curtis Taylor Jr. And he's falling in love with uh, another character, Dina. And he's like head over heels and just, 
like, you know, he can't stop thinking about her. That's all he wants to think about and dream about. So that's the whole song, basically. Okay. You want me to sing it? Sing, yeah, just a, give us a, um, um, a small section of it. Okay. When I first saw you, I said, oh my, I said, oh my, that's a dream, that's my dream. I needed a dream when it all seemed to go bad. Then I found you, and I have had the most beautiful dream. That any man's ever had. When I first saw you, I said, Oh my, I said, Oh my, that's a dream, that's my dream. All right, I'm going to stop you right there. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Andrew, tell me a little bit, um, tell me about who, who wrote the music for this piece. Tell me a little bit about it, where it's from, and, uh, and some of the background work you've done to, to, as you get started learning the song. Um, so, Henry Kreiger and Tom Ian. Um, Henry Kreiger, he wrote the actual musical part, and Tom Ian had, um, well, he did the, the lyrics, so he was a lyricist. Um, it's it's um, based on a, a Broadway show and also a movie um, in the 1960s time period. Um, and basically, you know, like I was saying, it's this character, he's like madly in love. Um, and, you know, his story is not something that I've been in. So what I have done to, you know, put myself in his shoes is, you know, watching videos and also using things that I've seen in other, uh, you know, movies and videos and stuff like that to put that into this character so I can, you know, you know, sing it and perform it how I want to in like my version of the character. Okay. All right. So good start. You, um, there's so much more that you can do. Um, I, I like the way you, you knew that it, it was set in the 60s. Can you tell me if it's, you think it's this, this the, the show, it's from the show Dream Girls, right? Is yes. the show based on any, any, um, anything in our history, any groups in our history, or any, do you know anything about that? So what I've, what I've seen and what I've looked up, it's like the, the movie and the musical, it's kind of a combination of, you know, real life and fiction. That's what I've seen. Um, I, it, it didn't give me any, like, you know, specific girl groups or any names of groups, but that's what I looked up. And seen. Okay, so I, I think in some ways, it's, it, a lot of people say it's loosely based on one. So you do a little bit more digging, all right? But what's good about your, your piece is that you do have, um, we know that it was started as a Broadway show, and, uh, and then it became the movie. So you have a lot of, of um, of uh, information out there that you can go to, you can watch, um, and and uh, as you build and develop your character, uh, what do you know about um, the the person that he's in love with? Um, well, what I know is that it's like this uh, through, through the whole musical, it's a love triangle, and you know, it's close to the the, the end, and he he um, he had been in love with another member of the group, but now he's, you know, turning, he's liking her, and, you know, he just, he can't stop. He knows, like, it's not really the right thing for him to do because, you know, a lot of drama that's, you know, happening, but he's, like, very, like, very, very in love. Okay. So have you, have you listened to more than one person as you prepare it? Um, no, I, honestly, I just listened to uh, Jenny Fox. I think like he has a good portrayal of the, uh, the yeah. character, so I just been listening to him. Well, I, I'd like to suggest that you listen to a few more. Okay. You know, a few more, and then to tap in to what those emotions are, where they come from inside of you. Who are you singing to? You know, uh, mm -hmm. and again, make it about who you are, that character that you are in that moment at that time. 
Okay. All right. I think we're we're about time. My time is up. Thank you for my to my participants. Uh, and I did want to leave just one. It's about a, a 30, 10 seconds. And we didn't have any questions. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Pam, we're actually out of time, so I'll make sure that um, all the students get to see the video. Uh, but thank you, Ms. Uh, Pam, for teaching us all about acting for singers because, you know, as a singer, it's important to make sure you portray the role that you're singing. Um, and again, thank you to our participants, Andrew, Jessica, and Kennedy. You guys have done some great work on your pieces. Yes, oh, sorry. Really can. Your last point. Actually, we're going to show the video. Give me one second. I'll pull it up. We could do it really quick. It's just a, a real quick encouragement from from me to you, from Miss Price to you. Um, go ahead. Office, one family. No achievement has nothing except what it's supposed to be. It has no color, it has no religion, it has you and your God-given talent. I want you to go out of this store and use it. Never let anything negative be in the way of your focus to achieve. It has been my mantra. It is so boring to hear people whine. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of the summer. Yes, thank you, guys, and have a great weekend.